Hey everyone, welcome back to my investment channel. A um, little bit mucky today uh, because it's been a nice day outside and I've been doing a bit of DIY. It's nice to know I've got a bit of a life outside just making videos. But I'm very quickly approaching ISA day, so I just wanted to get the last video out before April 6th that's about my journey into picking my strategy, my platform, and making all the mistakes before I start my ISA on April 6th. I think that, I think that was a sentence. Today is all about investment strategy. And when you start out, you start by poking around and just buying a few bits of shares here and there and not really knowing what you're doing. At least that's what I did. But when I started only a month ago, I did get very lucky with some really good buys. And I must stress that was really lucky. And since then, I've learned that I need a bit more of a strategy and I need to do a lot more research into the companies that I buy. I've got to point out that I lost a lot as well. Uh, and I'm still sitting on the losses from that. So I needed a strategy. After a few weeks of research, I managed to pin it down to two different types of investment strategies that I might think I use. It's worth pointing out here that when you're picking a strategy, you need to think about your individual circumstances, your level of risk, and what you want out of investing. I'm a bit of a middle grounder. I don't wanna to take too much risk, but I also want good returns. So I'll take you through the dilemma I had when trying to pick a strategy. The first strategy is growth investing. Growth investing is probably the first thing you think of when you think of the stock market. You think of buying shares low and selling high and blah, 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 and all that shit. And that's pretty much what it is. The idea is that you find companies that are doing pretty shit, uh, you buy into them and then they do really well. Or you find companies that are really new, that are gonna do amazing things in the future, you pay into them and then they do really well. That's how it works. This strategy can produce really good returns really, really quickly. It can also cause some pretty shit losses as well. Right when I started, that uh, Game Changers fucking documentary came out. So everyone was into fucking plant-based meats. Uh, I put my money straight into Beyond Meat. And I think I saw a growth of about 100%. I sold out right at the top where I was really lucky. And I think a week later, it was right back down to the bottom. I can't help but think there that some people lost a fuck ton of money when they bought right at the top and then lost. That was my seriously lucky one. The other huge one right now is Tesla. If you have a look at Tesla last year, you will see that it was worth about 300 a share. That is super low for Tesla. And then over last year, it skyrocketed over 400%, I think it was, 400%. Let's put that in numbers. If you put a grand into Tesla in December last year and then sold early January this year, you would have scored about four grand. And to be honest, Tesla isn't the only one out there. There's loads of companies out there that have seen really high growth companies, particularly tech companies, fintech companies, streaming companies, that sort of thing. There are lots of simple investors out there like me and you who have made a fucking mint on these companies. But I can assure you there are plenty more who have really lost because as you can see, Tesla has tanked now. I feel really bad for anyone who bought at the top there. A stock like Tesla is way out of the market for me. I don't think you'd ever see me getting a bit of Tesla. Of course, I did at first. I made a couple of quid and sold, but I can tell you that that was complete luck. With growth investing, it's all about timing. You need to be around for when a company is really, really small and it grows, or you need to be around when a company has had a really bad situation. Uh, it's lost a lot of its share price, but it's likely to come back. Uh, Boeing springs to mind at this point. Next up, we have the dividend investment strategy or the income strategy. The dividend investment strategy is all about buying companies that are doing really well and at the top of their game, they've got excess profits and they're willing to pay those excess profits out to lots of shareholders. As a shareholder, when I get paid that money, I turn it around and I reinvest that money back into a company. Every month, every quarter, every year, I get paid these, I turn them around and put them back into the company. Then when it comes around to pay me more dividends again, I've got more shares in that company and they pay me more dividends back and so on and so forth. And it keeps going for years and years and years. And eventually you're sitting on a shit ton of money. Quick example this week is that I've been paid two dividends, one from Coca-Cola of 84 pence. And I think I had one from AstraZeneca for £1.46. These are two really solid companies that shouldn't be going anywhere. And they've got lots of excess profits that they're handing back to me. So this appears to be a much safer strategy than say the growth investing strategy, where you're picking household companies that have been around for a long time and they're not likely to go anywhere. It's a bit more boring, but it's great when you see them dividends coming in every month. But the downside of this strategy is that over the 20 or 30 years that you're playing the game, you will miss out on some really new companies that become massive. You know, if I was dividend investing from say, 
the millennium, the year 2000, and I strictly stuck to the dividend investment strategy, I would have missed out on Amazon, Facebook, Nvidia, AMD, Netflix, Apple, Google, Under Armour, Tesla, all these companies I would have completely missed out. I'm not sure how to help with that. Fuck's sake, Google. This is a red fox. Are you done? Alrighty then. Fucking Google. Right, where was I? Um, stop. Oh yeah, missing out on Tesla. So yeah, you would have missed out on all of these companies and missed out on a significant part of growth in the stock market. You can take part in a dividend investment strategy with indexes. I'm about to buy some ETFs that track indexes. They pay dividends between about two and 4%. So you still get the dividend reinvestment, but you also, because they're indexes, you get to benefit from the overall majority of growth in the stock market. So if you're brand, brand new to investing right now, it might not be a good idea to pick stocks and shares individually, but just pick some index ETFs like the S&P 500, or the FTSE 100 and start there and then start thinking about what you might invest in later. But to really utilize the dividend investment strategy, you need to invest in single stocks called blue chips. The FTSE 100 is a list of 100 stocks that are all considered as blue chip stocks. They're all considered as companies that are going to be around a long time and they pay dividends. Not all of them are actually good blue chip stocks, but it's a good place to start looking. Two key blue chip stocks to look at right now in this recession are Shell and AstraZeneca. Shell's a good one because even though we've had this oil price war going on at the same time, it's actually changed its own investment strategy. It stopped its buyback program and it's selling a lot of assets. And it appears that the only reason they're doing that is to keep their earnings per share up and keep their dividend paying out. So Shell has a really good chance of keeping its dividend going through this recession. AstraZeneca is another blue chip stock that keeps its dividend going as best as it can. It has been through some turbulent times, but it has also changed a few of its investment strategies to keep parts of the business going. It also might be one of the blue chip stocks that isn't as heavily affected in the virus crash because it's actually gonna do some work towards combating the virus. I'm gonna quickly throw in Hikima Pharmaceuticals on this one because they make a lot of products as well. They might be a good one to look at also. So what strategy am I picking right now for my ISA? Well, it might be a bit of a surprise, but it's probably gonna be both. The market right now is absolutely crazy. And these few months right now are probably the best time ever to be a growth investor. So I just can't discount that strategy right away. Loads of companies right now are 30% down and some out there are like 80% down. There is a lot of opportunity out there right now to take advantage of some real growth from some companies that were fucking huge. I want to take advantage of this, but I've still got to be very careful that the companies that I pick are actually going to survive this recession. It shouldn't be news to you right now that there's going to be a lot of big companies out there that are going to go bust. In fact, one analyst was looking and saying that there might only be three retailers left in the US after this. At the same time as the growth investing, I really do need to pick companies that are going to grow back to their original positions and start paying out their dividends again. Because in the long term, they're the companies that are going to make me the most money and compound all that interest all the way to 30 years. So I've got a nice little bit of money that I can you know, spend on a boat or something. The growth investments or the risks that I'm looking at making, they're all going to eventually be sold when I've found a really good price for them. And then that money is going to be reinvested back into blue chips so I can get more dividends. So the real reason if I do buy any companies for growth is just so I can put it all back into dividends. A quick look at the investment portfolio. This is probably the last time you're going to see the investment portfolio. Worth mentioning here that this video might not come out till after I've started the ISA up because I just don't think I'm gonna have time to edit this video before I start my ISA. Everything's gonna have a backlog of about a week, maybe something like that. But on my portfolio today, it's considerably down and also my loss percentage is considerably higher as well. This is because I've sold off a lot of my stocks that were in profit, all in preparation to hoard the cash so I can put it in the ISA. Today, I sold all my shares in Microsoft, not because I don't like them anymore. I'm gonna immediately reinvest in them in the ISA, but the profits were up about a fiver. And what I did is I went through, I sold them, clicked withdraw, and then headed that money straight on out. So all my money is a little bit lower on the portfolio today. 
I just wanted to make one more honorable mention for Carnival. Carnival's a massive cruise company that's down over 80%, mainly because it's been completely shut down due to the coronavirus. In my personal opinion, it has quite a good ability to weather this storm, but it's not likely to be able to do this on its own. It's probably going to need a bailout at some point, like all the airlines. Warren Buffett of Money Fame has announced that he wants to bail out a couple of airlines and hotels and casinos. He didn't include cruise liners in that, but I've got a feeling that he is including cruise lines in that and Carnival would be one of the best bets for him to buy. If it comes out next month that Berkshire Hathaway have bailed out fucking Carnival cruise liners, holy fucking shit, you watch the share price go up. But that's just me being speculative for speculation's sake. I will be buying some shares in Carnival, but please do not take that as a golden fucking word because I have no clue what's going on. Right, that's enough for today. This is just a video that I've made that I can expect to be out in maybe a week or two. So all of the news events that I've just talked about might be completely out of date by the time this video airs. However, the strategy part of this video should be timeless. Everything I've said about the two strategies should be really important when you decide what type of investor you want to be. If you're a bit fucking risky and you wanna make some millions, go for the growth strategy. If you're in for the long haul and want it a little bit easier, go for the dividend investment strategy. If you're ready to start investing, I use Trading212 as my platform. I have a link in the description below where if you click that link and sign up, we both get a free share. And if this video was useful and entertaining to you, don't forget to like, subscribe and invest.